Matt fans, welcome back. Today we are looking at SLYR plugin for QGIS. This plugin comes to us courtesy of North Road, and if you go to their website, link below, you can learn a lot more about its capabilities. Now, this is a community edition, and one of the questions I had was, why is it called SLYR? If we nip over to the GitHub repo, it becomes obvious that Niall Dawson is a Slayer fan. Excellent. That pleases me greatly. So let's dive in and see what we can do with the community edition. <laughs> I'm on a Windows machine and this is the Community Edition, therefore there's a little bit of setup to do before we can start using Slayer. And yes, I will be calling it Slayer from now on because syllables. And we're beginning in the GitHub repo because whenever you're starting with a new tool, you should always read the docs. But of course, if you've got any questions, do leave me a comment down below. And in the docs under status, we can see the open source version, Community Edition, only supports esri.style database files. So if you need more functionality than that, do head on over to North Road, link below and right there, and you can get the full version. Also for the tools, we do need MDB tools for handling .style database files. Binaries for those can be downloaded from there, and we need to put them in our Windows path. So let's start off by doing that. Click the link, and away we go. So here we've got a bunch of binaries. I am just going to download the zip file, save it onto my C drive in a folder called MBD Tools. I'll extract it and then I am going to add that to my Windows path. If you need any help with any of that, just let me know in the comments down below. Next up, we need to install the plugin and on the GitHub page for Slayer, there are some instructions. Fortunately, we can sidestep those because the plugin is available in the QGIS repo. And back in QGIS, if we go to plugins, manage and install plugins, and then just type in Slayer, then we get the community edition and we can just install that. Job is a good one. Now, if I open up my processing toolbox, you can see that Slayer community is now available as a processing tool. And don't forget we're on the community edition, so we can convert styled databases to QGIS XMLs. If we try and do something else, like a layer dataset, it will tell us that we need to upgrade. But for now, let's just open this up and see what happens. Oh no. Now this means that Slayer is looking for MDB export. And as you can see, it says, please go and set up the path to MDB tools in settings options under Slayer tab. So if we go up to settings and we go to options, then we have the Slayer tab down here, a new tab in here, and you can set your path to MDB tools. Now, at the time of recording, I couldn't get this to work, and so instead I installed the previous version, which is Slayer 3.0.3. .3. If you'd like to know how to do that, then stick around at the end, and I will show you how to do that at the end of the video. When you have got it installed and it is working, it should look like this. There we go, convert Esri style to QGIS style XML. Up next, we need to create an ArcGIS style file so that we can test this. And here I am in ArcMap 10.8. My goodness, it's been a while. And I'm gonna go up to Customize and go to Customize Mode and then click on Commands. Scroll down to Tools. And there is a little tool in here called Export Map Styles. So I'll just grab that, take it up to my toolbar and just drop it on there. Excellent. If I close that down, you can see that I've got land parcels here. This is for a patch of the UK and then different various land types that are stuffed into here. And I'm just gonna hit Export Map Styles. That'll take me to the default folder for my ArcGIS install. And instead I'm gonna go to this PC and stick it in my documents just because it's easy. And I'll call this land use dot style. Actually, it'll just save it as that dot style file type. So that's what we'd like, save there. 
Now we're back in QGIS and I'm going to use the convert Esri style to QGIS style XML tool. And I will go and find my style database and it's called land use style. Let's open that up. And the destination XML file, I'm going to save that to file. And let's call it land use CEH and save that. And if we hit run, you can see that it runs. There were a couple of red notices in there, and that is largely to do with reduced functionality because this is the community version. Absolutely fine with that. It doesn't look like it's going to break anything. So I'll just close that out. And now I'm just going to bring these styles in. So this is one way to do it. I'll open up Style Manager. And then I will go down to import or export and import items. And from a file type, I am going to navigate to landuseh.xml. Open that up and I would like to add to favorites. I'm going to have the additional tags of landuseh. That looks good. And I'll select all and import them. I'll just yes to all on the overwrite. It's almost like I've done this before. Now that I've imported them, if I scroll down, I'll have a new tag that's land use CEH, and you can see all of our symbols are now in there. Fantastic. So we've imported that XML, and we've got those symbols ready to roll. Now, if we want to apply those symbols, I can get my land parcel layer, which that layer file was for. That's just a shape file, and if I drop it in, we have no style attached to it. But if I want to attach that XML to it, I can open up the properties. And here you can see I've got land use CEH already selected in my tags. And that shows me all the various land use types that I can add to this. But what I would like to do is go up to categorized. And then I'm going to choose a value to categorize on. And that'll be BHAB in this case. I'll hit classify and here you can see the values and the legend that match the names of our symbols. So if I go down to this advanced button, I can either match to saved symbols or I can match to symbols from a file. So let's use our saved symbols. I'll bring that in. That's 10 categories matched to symbols. We could of course do match to symbols from file and then just navigate to our land use CEH XML and use that instead. But I'm going to do it from the saved symbols from our style manager. And things are looking pretty good. I'll just OK that. And that's what we look like at the moment. And if I do the drop down here, we can see all of this. Now let's compare this to what's going on in our ArcGIS MXD. Here we've got them side by side. I've got my QGIS project on the left and my ArcGIS MXD on the right. Now immediately we can see that something is afoot and it looks like this red category which is broad leaved woodland up here. And over here it appears to be called broad leaf woodland. In the attribute table it's called broad leaf whereas in the style it is called broad leaved. So we can fix that, that's not a problem. I'm just going to open up our options here and I'm going to click on the broadleaf woodland and open up that style. And we can see that there is a style in land use CEH called broadleaved. And I'm just going to apply that to our broadleaf woodland. Okay, so that highlights the need to double check these things. Now you'll see as well that I've got all of the values checked here. Um, it might be worth turning off everything else and just making sure that we haven't got anything that hasn't been caught. So I'll apply that, OK, and there's nothing showing, which is good. That means that all our classes have been assigned a value and it's worth just double checking the names and things like that to make sure everything has been caught. But that, in a nutshell, is how we can take an Esri layer file and convert it into a QGIS style. Now, of course, if you need this as a QML, you can double click on here 
and go down to the bottom where it says style and save style and you can save it as a QML wherever you'd like to. And I think that'll do for today. It's really exciting that we can now move from ArcGIS layer styles or style files over to QGIS and QML. So thanks a million to Niall, North Road and all the funders. And thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and... <laughs> I was going to show you how to install an earlier version of the plugin, so I'll do that right now. So I'm back in QGIS, I'm just going to go up to plugins and manage and install plugins. And if I go down to Slayer Community Edition, it says there's a new version available because I've got 3.0.3, um, but the most recent version is 3.0.4. So if I just click on this version number, it should take me to the plugins repository, excellent. And in that plugins repository, we should be able to go to the plugin details on version management and go to the versions tab. And then you can download 3.0.3. I'll just click on that and then hit download. That allows us to download a zip, so save that somewhere sensible. And then back in QGIS, I'm just gonna uninstall Slayer so that I've got a blank slate to work with, so uninstall the plugin. Okay, that, that should be uninstalled now. Close this down. Now what I need to do is get to where my plugins are stored on my machine. So I'm just gonna go up to settings, user profiles, and open active profile. With the active profile open, if I double click into Python and then into plugins, I'll just scroll down. This is where all my plugins are saved and you can see that Slayer is not currently there. So the next thing I need to do is open up another instance of Windows Explorer and I'm just going to go to where I saved the earlier edition of Slayer and there it is. Slayer Community 3.0.3. .3. Double click into there. There's Slayer Community. So I'm just going to copy this into our folder and you should see Slayer Community in there. Now at this point it's probably a good idea to restart QGIS. I'll just do that now. Welcome to new Q. I have restarted and don't forget Slayer won't add any new menus. It's all in the processing so I'm just going to go to processing, open the toolbox and there it is, Slayer. And let's open up this just to make sure it's working. Excellent. Don't forget if you are getting that error, that means that you need to show Slayer where your MDB tools are and you can do that in your Windows environments. And if I go up to the plugins, manage and install plugins, down to Slayer, and you can see I've got version 3.0.3. .3. I'm sure that 3.0.4 will be updated soon so that that path works. But in the meantime, if you want to install the earlier version that will get it working. All right, let's try this again. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and happy mapping.